Hi, my name is Joshua Hanlon. And I'm Matthew Kett. And we're here at the Sea Science Center to show you the massive Lego Milliard project. project. So a few quick facts about this. There's 3 million Lego bricks in this project, and it was built from 2004 to 2006 by several different builders, all sorts of people involved in this it's project. the largest minifigure scale Lego installation in the world. And this was a textile factory here. The campus was over a mile large, the real campus, and it was the largest textile uh, manufacturer in the world. So it was it, it, back when this was in the early 1900s, when this place was up and running at full strength, it was incredible here. So we'll just take you through. There's, you'll, you'll notice uh, a lot of the buildings look pretty similar. You've got kind of white windows with a brown brick outside. So you'll see that on a lot of the buildings throughout it. And take a moment to appreciate the running water here. That's, uh, that's just an interesting little additional feature. You have some running water inside of the layout. So water and Lego, maybe they don't get along that well, but, you know, kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And like we said, this is minifig. This isn't like micro scale, so you, you'll see minifigs all throughout it. Uh, they actually went with the flesh tone minifigs as well, which is an interesting Interesting choice. choice. Yeah, it's definitely nice to have those flesh tone minifigs. Not too many different face prints, I guess, because uh, this was built, what, in the 2005, 2006 uh, mm -hmm. region at that time. So not too many flesh tone minifigs out back then, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And so we mentioned the water there. You can see kind of the, the train yard here where they would use to, to transport a lot of the, the stuff around. Got barrels for all of the, the textile work they needed to do. And then... Uh, you'll notice that, that be, besides the Lego, there's a lot of, I think it's mostly just like wood that they use to kind of support it all, kind of give platforms so, so they could set it all up. So that's most of what it is besides Lego. Certainly. And I think uh, maybe getting back to that water, it's, it's important to know that these mills were here because of that water. Uh, the Merrimack River actually descends, uh, I believe it is uh, 54 feet uh, along the... Uh, Amoskiag Falls. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, Close but uh, th that that fall in uh, elevation allows the uh, you know a lot of electricity, I guess, or uh, other means of power to be generated from the river. So uh, a very uh, interesting, interesting location, but a very logical one for industrial activities such as this. Mm -hmm. And right now we're looking at a wonderful rail yard, as you can see, nine volt track. Uh, of course, that is no longer made, but back in the, the time that this uh, was constructed, that was the train system uh, available. Oh, yeah. So we'll keep moving along this way here. Big project all along here. So you can start to see some of the buildings. There's a building coming up here that's the whole side is taken off of it. And you can see in there all the machines they've got going, the ma manufacturing, all different sp specialized machines. And, of course, this is the, depicting the processing of raw cotton. So these are uh, machines that process cotton and turn it into fabric that's usable. So uh, it's really interesting to see all the, uh, the Lego version, I guess you could say, of the inner workings of this uh, mill. Very, very cool. Yeah. And the minifig's hard at work in there. And some of the information that they, they talk about, if you come, they've got plaques and things here. Uh, they said it was really noisy in there, so it would be loud and noisy. I'm sure not, not the best working conditions for a lot of the people in there. But, you know, they did. They worked with what they had. And then if you, the, the large wheel where we're looking at here uh, just a minute ago, um, that large wheel, you can see the technique that's been used to create it is uh, like plates that have been flexed, you know, to kind of create that circular shape. So it's interesting to see that kind of a technique used in a permanent installation. I always uh, am scared myself about something like that, maybe just popping off and kind of exploding in your face. But uh, really, really cool, that uh, interesting technique. Yeah. Keep moving down along, along these large buildings here. And there's, there's some stuff in the middle that's going to be hard to see since we can only get a view from the outside, but you'll notice there are some, some buildings in the middle as well. And so then here you've got a nice uh, bridge going over the rivers that we mentioned earlier. And it's almost like a viaduct, right? So it's like a yeah. bridge, and then it's like elevated above the ground itself. Uh, really, really beautiful bridge, nicely rendered out. At, at one time here, there were strikes that took place on this bridge. Sometimes the workers, like I mentioned, were in some pretty tough conditions. There were some strikes that took place here over the years, and they would congregate on this bridge uh, when they would protest or working conditions, low wages, things like that. So... Keep moving along the bridge here. Come, come to another real long building here. You'll notice, is that Duplo there uh, kind of supporting uh, on the I outside? I believe Duplo is used to do, uh, kind of represent a retaining wall right against the river. And so in real life, they are really large like stones that have been used to kind of hold back the riverbank and allow them to build closer to the river to kind of expand the amount of land that they're able to utilize. So, But really nice to include Duplo, right, because it's bigger. So you can kind of build a large structure with less bricks because it's just Duplo bricks. Mm -hmm. And 
Then during the Great Depression, this actually had to shut down momentarily with the, the economic troubles the whole country was in. So after that, it really ran into hard times. It never fully recovered. There were some natural disasters that came through, washed out the bridge and things like that that really, really hurt a lot of the production here at the, the factory. Mill yard. And then keep coming down here. There's kind of a platform you can get up on here, so we'll head up on this small platform here. And get you some nice, uh, check out those very nice train cars. We got some cool box cars, and that's dark red, dark green, and tan. So nice to see some cool Lego colors there. And this on this building up coming up here, they actually had a massive American flag that they would uh, hang from the front of the building in uh, 1914. They did this. I, I believe it was actually made at the the mill yard here. They made this massive flag and then hung it on the building. It was 95 feet long and 50 feet high. Weighed 200 pounds, and it was made right here at the mill yard. Each of the 48 stars was three feet across. That gives you an idea of the, the massive scale of this flag that they did. That was in 1914. So just incredible amount of production going on here. And This gives you a good view if you look kind of toward the middle, like I mentioned, some of those buildings that are harder to see. Uh, you, you can really see a lot of them here. Trains going through. You get a view of a few minifigs. So then we'll keep going down here then. You can see that some of the river kind of flows along here. A lot of these buildings do look pretty similar with the, the brown brick and the white windows. And it's really cool to see uh, a brown brick has a lot of uh, different color variations uh, within it. So in a typical situation, if you're trying to build something that maybe is supposed to have like a clean aesthetic, uh, brown brick uh, is not the great, like best for it, but this is supposed to be like, you know, kind of a natural brick tone, right? So you want to have all kinds of different uh, colors, all, all that stuff appearing. So you see that variation here. And now I believe that that might not only be attributable to... Uh, uh, mold differences and differences in the, the makeup of the plastic, but this in fact is a different color of brown, and these two tones are being used to kind of give that uh, speckled look, as it were. Very, very cool. Certainly, and uh, keep moving down here. You can see off in the distance there, there's some parks and things like that. Uh, then you've got a lot of the, the factory buildings right here still. And from this vantage point, you can really kind of uh, appreciate what uh, the whole like central planning of the mill, like the mill yard uh, area was supposed to be. Uh, I guess you have mills, right? And then in the distance, you have these workers' homes, or me these might be like managers' homes. These look kind of nice, right? So maybe those are like the shift managers, something like that. But, you know, it's that live-work balance kind of thing or uh, you know living close to the mill so you can get to work easily in winter all that kind of stuff I don't know mm -hmm. definitely and we should mention at some point here this was uh, the New England Lego users group was a big part of this build so if you're familiar with them a lot of the builders that are still around today in that group helped build this certainly it was like a, a very long uh, collaborative project that they did together over uh, several weekend like building sessions over a period of years this pipe here with all of the water coming out is really neat you can see kind of the, the decay on the Duplo bricks and things over the years with all that water running through you can see Lego with water running around uh, it does kind of have a tendency to maybe decay just a little bit yeah definitely and so this is kind of kind of some more uh, building over here this is kind of the natural resources they have bricks and lumber and things like that coming through and a mill under construction right mm -hmm. Yeah, you use a ton of raw materials for these buildings. You know, they all had to be built out of like brick or lumber, like. I and said. that's so what makes uh, an area like New Hampshire so advantageous to something like this, right? Because there's a plentiful supply of timber and stuff up here, or a nice water supply as well. For sure. So that works really well. So keep coming along here. Well, like like we said, this is kind of all under construction here. This building, you can see the cranes. You got the minifigs working on it. They, I'm not sure how many exactly minifigs there are. Uh, I don't think it's said, but there are quite a few here, so you'll see them all throughout. Now you can see uh, at LEGO conventions, there's a lot of emphasis on not touching the LEGO displays. And, uh, you know, some things don't change because uh, just don't touch this LEGO milliard, okay? Ugh. So coming along, finished building here. It's got the cranes and things we were talking about. And then... Down here, you can see kind of the big building rail, rail yard. And one of the interesting things to appreciate about these buildings is that uh, other than the portions where they're exposed to, to indicate something or show a building process or show the inner workings, most of these buildings are really just like facades. So there's not too much on the inside. 
So it's it's kind of cool, you know, that there. The, I mean, I, I, with something this large, it would be completely unrealistic to try and build interiors for every building here. So to just kind of focus on the facade is really really mm -hmm. cool. And then here, right here, this is an open pit of coal. Yeah, right? big coal pit. As time went on, they used more coal and then oil uh, to to make uh, for power. So you'll see this is a massive pile of coal. You'll see some oil throughout the the buildings here as well. So that's it was it. Uh, became a big expense for them, but uh, that's kind of what, as time went on, that's what the world was moving to for their power sources. And you can see the train tracks go all the way down there. That's probably one of the longest tracks I've seen straight tracks before. That's really amazing. You can see all the, the stretch all the way down to the other end of the build there. You can see it kind of wobbles around, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, just like a real track, you see that little, little <clears throat> subtle wobbling. Uh, crazy, really, to see a uh, length of track that long. Have we talked about the smokestack tower? That's a very interesting no, technique haven't. being used. Once again, that sort of uh, flexing of brick, you know, kind of interspersing the one by one round uh, cones with, uh, I believe, that was one by two yeah, bricks. Yeah, one by two. To kind of get that tape, <coughs> tapering chimney effect, right? <coughs> yeah, definitely. And so it, it works really well. You see that effect on like lighthouses and things like that usually too. Certainly, certainly. And then moving along here, we have a amusement park. So uh, this would area. be kind of yeah, moving away from more of the factory buildings. This would be like you know, take your family out for a fun day. Got the uh, the Ferris wheel. <clears throat> what, let's see, you've got a little uh, the the river uh, here. All sorts of like carnival games, even a, a roller coaster, merry-go-round. All sorts of some fun things for the family to do here, away from the the factory area. As you keep coming around here, that I really like the roller coaster. That's a neat design. Like how they did that. Let's see here, it's Pine Island Park, there's what that's called, you got kind of a, a marching band type of thing. And then in the distance here we have a wonderful like uh, train station design, now I'm not going to try and name the architectural style of this train station, but we'll just say it's a very beautiful train station, wonderful, wonderful roof designs, like lots of different pitches, that's always kind of cool to see rendered out in LEGO, mm -hmm. very, very nice. And then here in the foreground, you can see um, some, I guess this would be like a, some kind of a lumber yard almost. Yeah. But those uh, wonderful one by six um, Lego tile elements with the wood pattern on it, right? Only available in a handful of sets, so those are hot commodities to this day. But uh, fortunately, the aftermarket has been able to make some wood printed tiles now. So Yeah, you can find those. <laughs> and some, something interesting here that... Uh, this was such a big economic powerhouse. It really attracted a lot of attention from politicians and things. Six U.S. presidents actually toured this area while it was still in operation. So all sorts of famous people came through these buildings. <laughs> so and we have a cigar factory, A.G. Mm -hmm. Sullivan Cigar Factory. Very Which cool. I think might be around. I think I remember seeing I mean, that from the hotel. That. Yeah, uh, We did see that by the Brick Fair in New Hampshire, uh, Brick Fair in New England, I believe, uh, hotel. It's still here to this day. So a lot of the buildings like here are like that. You can kind of say, oh, wait a minute, like these row houses in the distance here. Uh, you can see those still here mm -hmm. to this day. And some of the buildings are no longer with us, unfortunately. But a lot of these buildings have, uh, uh, you know, continued to have a life in the modern day. And they've all been repurposed for different things. For instance, uh, this mill yard is located in one of the former mills. Yeah, and you can see here, this is kind of giving the example of some of the, the social changes that came about. They built this playground for the kids, employee benefits got better, and you know, beautification, uh, fountains, and things like that. So, really cool stuff there. Then, moving along here, get some, now this is kind of a different looking building. It's not just the, the brown brick. You actually have kind of some other, some black features, some gray there. Uh, this is more like housing type of thing here for the workers. Then you can, <laughs> over, over to the left, there's actually some, some workers uh, working on it over there. Slightly slightly destroying some of the, the buildings you might have seen. I believe a tree just might have been knocked over. <laughs> I'm sure they're doing their best to try to preserve it's it. It's Lego, it can be put back together. Yeah, Don't worry. that's a nice thing. We keep moving down here. It's a nice tan building, so as this area became a uh, more and more economic powerhouse, they built more and more of this up, and uh, actually they paid $300 million in wages to the city in taxes between 1831 and 1931. So that's really 
really insane amount of money so there. So certainly made Manchester, Manchester, right? All of those yeah. tax dollars able to feed into the city's economy. But uh, really interesting techniques here that have been used for the awnings. These are click hinges, and so the click hinges are able to kind of hold some bricks to represent like a canopy design, right? Really, really cool. And something else I think that's worth noting, uh, I believe that color on this building right here, that's light yellow, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's an interesting so you color. you kind of see that throughout here. There's a big sand green bridge, a light yellow building. These are colors that many people would really struggle to build stuff in. But I suppose when Lego is sponsoring your massive building project, you can kind of afford to use some amazing colors. <laughs> so fortunately, they were able to do that, right? Yeah, well, that's cool. So you see some nice colors like that. It's, you don't see a lot of those today. And then here's a really nice kind of clock tower little build. Now, is that a printed uh, clock tower piece? Is that from like a Harry Potter set or something? I want to say it's like from a, a licensed theme, right? It could be, yeah. I'm not sure exactly. But then here, this is kind of a, a whole marching band area. Got all the uniforms dressed up. There are instruments there. They use some some particularly interesting things. Here's some like little harpo harpoon pieces from Aqua Raiders type sets, uh, Sea Raiders site type sets. So then, coming along down here. What, what is this building here? This is a really interesting design. This is not the Hennard. Hennard. Perhaps okay. it's a hotel. That's what it looks like to me. Yeah. Very nice building. You can see, look at the, the roof. They have some really nice skylights there. That's a wonderful building. And then almost like that brick effect with the, the plates on the outside there, totally, giving it totally. that brick look. So you, and then on the, the left here, we want to make sure we show you this. We might come back here real quick. Here's a little display about kind of the people who helped uh, build, like we mentioned, you know, any lug. Uh, there was some first Lego League and other people who helped. Some, a couple of Lego the master two builders. Lego masters, Steve Gerling, Eric Varsegi. Shouts out to Steve mm -hmm. Gerling and Eric Varsegi. Very cool. Yeah, uh, all sorts of, of good builders like that. And there are builders like a Tom Atkinson, some other people you might be familiar with. And then videos. you can see this is how the base was constructed. So it is very, very rigid. And so it's, you're even able to, as we saw earlier, walk on it because it is so, uh, you know, so rigid mm -hmm. and able to hold a human's weight. So I guess this was built by... CLD Consulting Engineers. Very nice. Yeah. Very cool. So there's kind of a look at some of the people who helped out with it and things. And then uh, going on down here, we can see that there, this, this, we'll just look at the phase one uh, just to get a little sampling of the people that were involved with it at that time. You can see uh, Jamie Burrard. Mm -hmm. So Jamie Burrard is from uh, the New England region, and he now works at uh, Lego as a yeah, Lego set like designer. designer. So this was like one of the maybe projects that he worked on as he was kind of getting started. And then uh, I think we'll just take a chance to kind of go through a couple other names. I'm just going to say some of the names that stand out to me. We have... Um, was it Doug, Ashley, Katie, and Amy Eaton? And so they, too, lived in the Boston area around the time that this was being constructed and were members of Nelug. They now live in the North Carolina area uh, near me, actually. So uh, shouts out to Doug and his family there. Very, very cool. And then we see... Um, Mike Ripley. Mike Ripley. Yeah. Very nice to see Mike Ripley there. And a, a bunch of other names that, uh, that don't stand out to me necessarily. But uh, it's uh, just fantastic to see that there was such a wonderful involvement with the local club. Mm -hmm. So you can see a few photos all along here of them kind of working on it. They've got their, their yellow staff shirts on. And so. then uh, you can also see the name of, uh, we have Mike Crowley here, is uh, listed as one of the members that participated in this uh, construction. And unfortunately, Mike Crowley uh, passed away, but uh, many people remember him as a wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful AFL, and it's uh, really touching to see his name here listed as one of the volunteers. And there's so. some great photos down here, if you can, I don't know if you how well you can see this, of them actually carrying these buildings onto the wooden platforms there. So these, these two photos here, they're actually carrying the buildings and setting, setting them down in place. <laughs> So I'm sure they had to be very careful with that. <laughs> uh, that could not be very easy. So yeah, we'll continue down here then. Uh, along with the Mill Yard project, they did a few kind of, I think, historic houses from the area here. So you can see a few of these here. This is the Joseph Prescott house. And this is a really interesting technique to achieve, uh, I believe, how many sides we have here, Josh? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I believe so. This is an octagon, something like that, yeah. maybe? But uh, a really interesting design used to achieve that octagonal shape, right? So you have the cheese slopes and a little plate hanging off the side to kind of create that beveled edge so you can get that really cool octagonal shape going. Mm -hmm. So cool historic houses couple more coming along here. This is, you can see real life photos of it, and these are very, very good representations of the real life house. They did a great job with that. And then once again, the staggering of the old uh, bluish gray with the new to kind of uh, represent that. It really does look like a real roof because it has that variation in color. Mm -hmm. This is the Josiah Carpenter house. Uh, looks so you notice like the, the brick color to a lot of these, so they kind of have a similar look. And then the John Dolber house. 
This one's more grayish with some bluish looks in there. Some nice black roofs. And then we'll come along here. Let's see, we're about to finish this out, actually. Very nice scarecrow design right there. Gotta love that. Minifig torso with a little spear going through it. Little antenna. Nice, nice. So, yeah, coming along, finishing out the mill yard. Probably you can see the river here again, a little bridge. Some nice kind of foliage along there. Uh, some of the, the big brown factory worker buildings. Once again, lovely tracks, and it's not ballasted. There's nothing fancy done to it, but it does look, you know, just uh, really nice to see that much Lego train track sort of laid out, right? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So here's the big American uh, loco company. So uh, I think it's like the train co area here with all the, the train track and everything, train yard coming through. So one of the interesting things about uh, Manchester is that a lot of different innovations did come out of this area. So there was a lot of industrial activity and a lot of uh, sort of situations that could use some inventive problem solving. Uh, one of the most interesting inventions that came out of the Manchester area in the time period in which this mill was in its uh, height of operation was the steam-powered fire engine. And so as absurd as that might sound uh, t today, uh, that, that's, quite a, that's quite an innovation, right? Because, uh, you know, uh, having a horse pull water, all that kind of nonsense, I mean, uh, mechanizing that certainly was able to probably save um, numerous lives. Right? Yeah. yeah, and there were a few other interesting inventions as well, like the fish ladder that uh, a lot of places use to uh, help with the fish get through because the, the dams were preventing the fish from swimming to their breeding grounds. So they use fish ladders all over the country now. And to that day, yeah, there's many, many fish ladders in the Pacific Northwest. I, I've personally witnessed many a nature documentary in which salmon are <laughs> happily scampering up a fish ladder. And they say that those uh, fish ladders and uh, dams are really not good for the environment, you know, because uh, you're just inhibiting their natural breeding patterns by uh, building a blockage, even if you are building a fish ladder. Yeah. But, uh, you know, nice inventions. Mm -hmm. Some, some really cool stuff here. Interesting so, rail yard sort of right here. Yeah, you got kind of the big rail yard, a lot of the track. Kind of an area to house some of the trains and stuff here. And then here we can see the tops of the chimneys. It's a really interesting technique. It's like a 3 by 3 uh, plate brick type of thing with a, uh, like, just sort of, I guess, put, what, putting tiles around the outside to kind of indicate a smokestack. It kind of reminds me of the, the Simpsons house chimney, if you yes, remember that. Yes, it's yes, it's yes, somewhat uh, similar to Really design. effective use of offsets, I would say, yeah. right? So, about to finish it out here, we've just got a couple of buildings left. So, see these the final kind of round buildings, a few buildings for the train yards. And uh, this is kind of showing some of the buildings they would use with gas as, they, as gas became more common. Now, I for... believe that we're looking at a cut base plate. Is that a cut base plate? That looks like a... It's like a not. This is a two by three, right? Really yeah. thick, and then that looks like it's a that cut... That does look... I don't cut, know. Something's off about someone that. Someone cut a base plate. Oh, my God. <laughs> So they, they actually helped to found a gas plant in this area here, the, the people who own the mill yard, so kind of became more common as time went on. And then uh, I think to maybe close this out for the final uh, round here, uh, we'll just take a look to see uh, who sponsored this. We got Neelug here. So these, uh, this was the labor behind the project, I would say, and then this is the Millier Project logo. And then first, uh, the robotics organization is actually headquartered in the same building that we are in right now here at the Sea Science Center. So that's cool, and they were also a sponsor. And then also the CLD Consulting Engineers, they were also a sponsor. Mm -hmm. Very, very cool. So there's the, the Lego Milliard project at the Sea Science Center. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Uh, we enjoyed talking about it. It's a really incredible project. The, the size of this is just massive. I don't know how well that came across in the video, but when you first see this thing, it's incredibly it's staggeringly huge. Staggeringly massive yeah. uh, build. Really, really <laughs> breathtaking. So, even having just come from a, a, a Lego convention, it's still incredible to see this here. So very cool. If you're ever in the area, if you're in Manchester, definitely encourage you to check this out. Well worth it. Uh, d definitely worth coming in here and seeing this. Certainly, so, certainly. thanks really for watching. Awesome we will see you soon.